said previously, this system is grid tied. So we're going to export excess energy into the grid. The charge controller is going to take the solar from the roof, push it into the batteries. Excess energy from the batteries is going to go through the inverter, converter from 48 volts DC to 240 volt AC. That AC energy will first go into the critical load panel, power all of our loads. Excess energy will go out through our AC1 input to our 60 amp breaker and our existing garage panel here and it'll power all of the loads in the garage panel. In the event that there's more solar available than, than load needed in the house between the two panels, excess energy will be exported and sent out to the grid. That grid will, that energy will go out to the grid and will be transformed and go to the neighbors and be sold out to the utility company. In conclusion, this system is going to provide security and comfort knowing that your critical loads are going to be powered 24 hours a day, 7 days a week off of the battery system and the system during an outage can charge the batteries via the solar system. The solar panels during normal AC power can also continue to keep the batteries charged but excess energy can sell power out to the grid. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video, and if you have any questions, you can check out our website at 3guyssolar.com. Thank you very much. These batteries need to be cycled, and I always recommend that two to three times per year, you run the system through a simulated power outage uh, unless you lose power naturally. But a simulated power outage is going to go ahead and show you that the system is working properly plus you want to cycle the batteries. The batteries just taking a charge every day keeps them topped off but also to keep them in good health you want to maintain them by running them through a cycle, running them through a load and giving them a chance to operate and to work. So, we're going to show you how to do a simulated power outage. To do a simulated power outage, first you want to make sure the system is on. We are currently at AC, light, AC input light is on, and we're actually in grid cell mode, and we're producing uh, 1,700 watts, and we're selling excess energy into the grid. To perform a simulated power outage, you can, one, go outside your main breaker and turn it off, or you can turn off our 60 amp solar inverter AC input breaker. This will give you a simulated power outage, allowing you to have additional power through the rest of the house for your other loads. So, here we go. Once I turn this breaker off, you'll notice the AC input light turn off, and you'll notice the display screen will stop selling energy. And our lights in this room is on the critical load panel. So, Turn the breaker, AC input breaker off. You notice a change in the lights. Our AC input light has turned off. That means the system has no AC input power and has thus experienced a utility outage. Currently, the critical load panel and our lights in this room and the rest of the house has power. Our eight circuits in here are still powered by the system. The system is being powered by the battery bank and the battery bank is being charged by our solar. You can see it's still showing the charge light is on, so the solar is charging the batteries. The batteries are powering our critical load panel and our loads in the house. You'll notice that the event light came on. That means that we've experienced a power outage and there's something going on. You can try to clear event warnings off of the display screen, but if you have an AC output, you're not going to be able to clear the fault because it is a current fault log. You'll notice that uh, our battery power is still staying at full power. We should be able to have enough power from the solar currently to be able to run all of our critical loads in the house, but you'll want to watch that during a power outage. The information here, we're running about 1.26 kW. That kW reading is the energy that the inverter is converting from our batteries and from our solar. 48 volts is running into 240 volts to be able to power our loads. Our loads in this particular case are about 1200 watts and we want to watch that to make sure that we're not exceeding the 5000 watt rating of the inverter. So after 
you're ready to cycle it back over, the main function you're going to do is going to restore your AC input power. We'll turn on our 60 amp breaker. Now we have our AC input light is flashing. It's flashing because the inverter is monitoring and checking the AC input voltage. It wants to make sure the AC input voltage is good and correct and the power is stable before it converts back. The flicker you saw on the light is the uh, brain actually figuring out that the AC input was good and connecting to the grid and now we're back to our power off of the grid. The system app will operate so quickly and switches so fast all you see is a, a basic flicker. The grid tide cell feature will actually need to wait five minutes before it will actually start converting and selling the excess energy. Now the inverter has initiated a countdown. That countdown will count down to zero and at that point it will be able to go back into grid cell mode. So we're at 25 seconds left here, 25 seconds it will start back up and go into grid cell mode. So our countdown has finished, the inverter has started up, it's taking excess energy from our solar, taking it right off the top of the batteries, and now it's converting it from DC to AC, selling it into our critical load panel, excess energy is going into our, our AC input panel, and any available energy then goes out to the grid.